is Judith for Golden Skeet. And today I'm very happy that I am joined by European bronze medalists, Annika Hocke and Robert Kunkel from Germany. Hello, <laughs> how are you doing? Hi, thanks for having us. Hello. <laughs> We're doing good, thank you. Good. Uh, so to start with, Robert, you just had your birthday. You turned 24. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. How did you celebrate? Uh, first, we celebrated at the army or we didn't celebrate at the army because we had our army camp at the moment. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then we drove to Berlin. We were lucky that we had one hour earlier. Um, finish the day and yeah, no nothing special. Like nice, very nice um, evening with family and friends. Uh, on Friday as well as on yesterday. Yeah, it was very, very nice. No big things with the people I or we love to spend this was very nice. Perfect. So, sounds perfect. <laughs> so uh, last season was, in my opinion, I think a very successful one for you, despite you had some health difficulties here and there. Like, how would you summarize your season, your past season yourself? <laughs> kind of, as you said already, so... In the beginning, we didn't thought um, it would be possible after the horrible <laughs> season before that we could achieve so much. I mean, of course, in our back of the head, we knew we are capable of achieving things and we want to achieve things. But it was more our goal for the future and not for the <laughs> super near future. So we were very, very satisfied with the season when we like thought about it in in total we of course i mean we're athletes we always want to be better and we realized that there would have would have been so much more uh potential and so much more that we could have achieved still which is really nice to know and uh but but nevertheless we are very happy with what we did yeah i i think you can totally be be very satisfied and you ended the season on a very high note with a clean free skate i think at worlds in japan yeah how was that for you <laughs> it was amazing it was i think all we could have dreamed of we had such a horrible day on the short and we really just uh try to as we already said a lot of times put our anger and aggression <laughs> into that program and it worked out really well and it was the only clean free skate that we had this season yeah. and we we really were super satisfied and happy and all the emotions after that skate <laughs> yeah. i think it would have got a little bit more appreciation by the points from the judges if we would skate it like two uh, warm-up groups later but for us it was uh, still very nice to make uh, like six po uh, six places uh, better and got the top 10 and yeah, didn't end it with a bad competition because every competition was in a special way a success this season. Uh, but we also know in every competition right after what we could have been uh, could have done better. So yeah, we have a lot of things to improve. Um, so you re relocated your training to Bergamo, Italy last off season. Um, what are, I think you said a lot of times that you enjoy it there like a lot and that you're very happy there. Maybe you can tell a bit what are the main differences in your training there compared to what you had before in Berlin? It's a lot, honestly. <laughs> of course, it's a whole different ice ring, whole different location, a new pr or pretty new venue. Everything is still super not just clean but just super new and good good for a practice and of course the time schedule is a lot different we train more like from the morning till the afternoon like from from ex for example from 9 to 4 or 9 to 3 30 something like that and in berlin we always had a huge break in between and trained in the morning or <laughs> late morning and then in the very late evening at seven or even sometimes at eight and we really yeah. enjoy that you can recover better after a hard day and of course we have a lot more uh, focus on us because there's a whole team of coaches that really try to make each pair their best and even with the pairs it's a, a very professional atmosphere you push each other. They all do a lot. They're all very eager to work. And it's very, very nice to be in that surrounding. Yeah, that you have like competitors on your level or like even the two pairs that were ahead of you at Europeans, they trained with you. So I guess that's yeah. motivation. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> Great. Um, as you just mentioned, right now you're doing this uh, camp with the Bundeswehr, like the German military service. Um, I guess it's kind of maybe unusual for some listeners or viewers outside of Germany. So maybe you can explain what exactly are you doing with the Bundeswehr? <laughs> At the moment, we have the second military camp you have to do as a sport soldier. There are three military camps and two kind of sport uh, camps. And then you're finished, then you have the highest grade you could end with. And ours is uh, in the middle, so we kind of learn to lead a military group. So it has have nothing to do with sport. It's exactly <laughs> the same what the normal soldiers are doing. It's just way shorter. So mm -hmm. normally it's, I don't know, three to six months or something like this. And we do it in three and a half weeks. So we get an idea what in um, what a soldier in our grade is doing at the army. Yeah, it's a, a totally different world than the sports world. We always wear the, the normal army clothes. We're just in, <laughs> in army clothes and you live in, a, in the building with all the others together. You have a small room, but um, yeah, you can really learn from that. And we had a lot of um, army laws and even a test on that. And it's a little bit like school, but um, yeah, it's four weeks and you learn a lot and you appreciate <laughs> the normal life even more after that. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. Is the camp for only sports people? So you are there with other athletes? Yeah. Yes. This time, yes. It's very nice to also uh, meet other sportsmen and talk with them and practice after um, the, the long day at the army. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. And you said you're a, a sports soldier. So um, how does the military, the Bundeswehr help you fund your training? Because I think almost all German uh, figure skaters are sports soldiers. So yeah, how do they support you? Yeah, at the moment, we got the normal salary, what uh, also a, a normal soldier would get in our grade. And this money shouldn't be there for paying the training because even the Bundeswehr is saying you get the money for the like for for living, living for, for living, social yeah. Yeah. for social um for the future for all this stuff but um yeah because of the critical situation in our federation we have to pay our job with our job salary at the moment and even more because it yeah. it's not that cheap uh, in in bergamo i mean it's doable but then if everything comes together like choreography training expensive competitions that's not doable with a normal army job. And in the army, it's like, as longer you're in, as more money you get. And we're kind of in the beginning. Um, and also from the grade, it's without a... Um, studium? It's without a... You could do kind of university at the mm -hmm. army and then you're in a very high grade and you got more money. And we're in the beginning because we're not studying oh, in, the, in army. the army. So it's um, it's nice if you have everything paid and you can just uh, use this for a living, but to pay your job with, it's uh, kind of critical. And also it's the money from the government that is for sports, but since they, I don't know, it, they somehow decided that they don't want to give the money to the sportsmen directly, the sportsmen e either have to go to the army or to the police. Police is undoable for figure skaters because it's like three months of really being in the police and that would be almost like no season preparation at all. So all of them are in the army. Yeah. And as Robert already said, uh, the money is usually for paying your rent, paying your, the your car, your car, everything. vacation, what normal yeah. people work for, you know? Yeah. And um, also it's, they really, in Germany, they really try to help the sportsmen for their life after sports. So if, if everything doesn't work out anymore, you still would have the army. And if you would want to, you can work there longer or forever. However, yeah, you They would prefer. love to, to keep you and to integrate you in the army. Or even you can also work at the, as a civilist in the army. So they would offer you a lot of stuff to integrate in a normal life after. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, well that, that's a great thing. That's very, uh, very, very supportive and a good thing for German athletes in general. But as yeah. you said, like, I mean, and you also came forward in German media 
uh, that the funding of the German Skating Federation is really, really not there or decreased significantly and uh, creates huge problems. Um, you just started to explain the situation uh, a little bit, but maybe you can say a, a bit more like um, why was it reduced and what kind of problems it creates for you? Yeah. We, don't, we don't know 100% why it was reduced. They told us a lot of different uh, reasons for. I think we're also not allowed to really say what it was. In general, they just uh, said that for the sportsmen, there was a lot of um, less payments because of the general uh, results of the Olympics, for example, because there it's made like four years and four years again. For the people who work in the federation, nothing changed, luckily, they said. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then like now, now we're here, you got the money. I think we're also not allowed to say 100% what we got, but like, let's say like this, you can pay the choreography. Um, <laughs> and then it's, it's, it's yeah, kind of over. Good. And they also put it away, the training expense, uh, the, the competition expenses. So for example, we got invited in a um, Grand Prix for Japan, like last year where we sadly didn't go. But for example, we got invited again. Yeah. It's impossible for us to bring a coach because you have to pay the flight, the hotel, and all the expenses for the coach. And that's, I don't yeah. know, a few thousand euros. And yeah. for the challengers, it's yeah. also for us not paid. So basically, we just can do the Grand Prix without a coach and then Europeans and Wells. And you have to imagine that in our system, the Federation always has like the qualification rules for Europeans are mostly two challengers and or the German nationals. And yeah, you can't do it. not yeah. being able to pay the challengers. You can't qualify for Europeans, which is like a totally mixed up uh, rule for going to an event where the Federation should be interested in sending athletes which is a little weird and to sum it up Robert already said like we basically did our choreo and the money for the whole season is gone we're not even at the beginning of the season and the money is not there anymore yeah. so it's not just the season it was also by uh, beginning of 2023 so also the the four months of the old season or the three months of the old season we paid everything by ourselves also the week preparation before the wars normally things like this can be extra paid but there was like nothing like really nothing like not just one euro but the 10 percent from the price money they still keep and they also don't want to change it yeah uh, but uh, did you go into discussion with them already or a lot of times yeah. but Many it's times. senseless <laughs> that's why we decided like of course we want to make it better for ourselves and we have to go forward with but we also decided that it's that somebody has to speak up for the whole sportsman in our federation and that it actually it would be best if we all come together and just try to make it public and be loud about how how hard it is for us as sportsmen to keep going <laughs> that's yeah. why we're at the media interview we had a big meeting with uh people who can influence a lot the sport in the Bundestag. We will have another meeting there. And we thought about talking with the people who really give the money, not who like mm -hmm. use the money, who, who give it and ask if it's really, um, or if it should be like this, that the Federation pays a lot of, uh, I don't know, s staff who organize some things or who do systems, but there's no more money for the real sportsman. Yeah. And it's not, sure it shouldn't be like this it's a critical situation and we need to see if we can maybe get into there but this will take take years to to change some structures so as uh, structures so we try to make it better for everybody but of course at the moment we're also searching sponsors for us because otherwise we can't pay the things in, in bergamo anymore and there's no no plan b there's no other like going back to berlin and train here with like he is also no no coach for us who's even paid by the federation so it's there's no alternative yeah so would be an uh, would it be like okay for you or an option for you if they have the same uh, if you get the same funding again that you had like this year like that the i think it was better this season right 
So for sure. <laughs> after we got a, after we we showed some results because be, before there was also nothing. When we went, I think we had an interview uh, last year in the summer where we told you we didn't even get answers on our emails. <laughs> but um, when we uh, when we showed the results last year was fine. I think they covered around fifty percent of the expenses. Yeah. And then you maybe have like a sponsor here, a little bit from the club, and then you come out with just paying, I don't know, a few hundred bucks out of your own pocket in a month. And, I mean, it's rare yeah. that a federation will pay everything. And that's a, a dream. That's a wish every athlete, I think, would have. But uh, they have to cover zero of the cost. We know that that is not possible, but um, it's definitely possible to help the athletes in the best way and really try to make something possible um yeah and if it would be like it was last season you could really work with that and uh, and you can plan with it and plan with it yes. because you know before but but this year you're like you know nothing yeah um you maybe got last call information at the three three days before the year is over okay you can give a receipt of four thousand euro but just with this on and with this on and that's possible that's not possible so you can't plan anything you don't know anything and it's, it's at the moment it's undoable because you can't spend even if you're out of zero but at the <laughs> moment we would spend more than we earn and that's not yeah no one yeah. wants to live like that yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah and i was just personally thinking if it kind of depends on the results of the olympics and this kind of stuff i mean if the federation or if they want to get better results then they have to put the push the money in and support their athletes that the results can be better right <laughs> Yeah, should be like that. Yes. Yeah, but they gave a lot of reasons, and then we talked with the one, like higher who made the money, and they said something different. And it's it's complicated. Yeah. To to figure out this, and it will not there will not be a solution in the next few months, even if we maybe make it better for the next Olympic uh, cycle. But uh, if it stays like this, and there will nobody find who who help us, like a a company or somebody out of from from Berlin or I don't know who. Um, then it's nobody will be there for the next Olympic cycle because, yeah. Yeah. because just millionaires could be the could, could do the sports <laughs> in Berlin or in Germany, not in, in general. Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a spiral downwards. Well, <laughs> it will be the okay. same with, with golf or with polo or with, with tennis. I don't know, it will be a sports. Yeah. I think tennis is easier, but um, it will be your sports where you need because imagine you have a, like three childs and two want to be ice skating and you have to pay like two, three, four thousand a month. <laughs> Who's doing yeah. that? Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. yeah. You told uh, in German media also that you gave the Federation like an ultimatum until autumn and then you would consider switching countries or this kind of stuff. Is that correct? Or... Well, it was not really an ultimatum. It's just Robert is very um, good in planning and he always calculates uh, everything to know how far we can get and uh, we need somebody who does that because otherwise we will just randomly end up somewhere and realize we have no money for anything left and he just had a look on how much we will spend that season and what has to be done and what we want to do and just the the money is just gone in October that's By just October yeah the... so it's not an ultimatum to the federation so ultimatum to our bank account <laughs> yeah and then it's it's nice that maybe they, they invite us for Grand Prix, but if we can't like train the the month before because we can't pay the expenses, then it makes no sense to go there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of also ultimatum to the to the federation. But um, if nothing like it's a general like deadline, if nothing changes and nobody will find where we get some some money, it can be over by every month. And it's also hard to train with these in the head because I have to concentrate more on um all this stuff than actually on on training it was same at worlds like if you have a look in the other countries they can like the federation is making everything that they feel comfortable and that they can concentrate on this competition and for us everything was important except the competition like you have to do these forms you have to on the flight you have to do this and uh, i don't know for you have to do this flight because that's more that's cheaper and premium premium economy how dare you after a 30 hours flight like you know that's not possible for us and yeah it's uh, when you're in the meeting everything is impossible except the uh, except the result or the result is possible but not how you should get there like you just have to show result but 
to make it uh, to come there and to plan it together and to see okay but then we need this and this and this that's not doable yeah that's yeah and well do you really consider switching countries or you looked into options for that yes yes yeah <laughs> yeah like for us it's it's difficult because we are or we know we are at a point w where we kind of wanted to be and are like on the upward yes. hill and that's what we always wanted and we know we can still do so much more and it would be the worst time to quit skating and we really yeah. don't want it because we found the nicest place where we can train with good athletes and we know that there's so much more possible and quitting is just not an option so yeah. we have to look at other options yeah so this headline came out because from from rbb they asked us uh okay but if it's october and nothing changed like what you do you quit and we just said like no we definitely don't want to quit we will find a different solution we will do maybe like shows for one year and then came back for a different country because we are sure that somebody is interested in a, in a couple which has a lot of potential so there will be a way where we will end up in a competition season again we don't know when but we will definitely not quit the sport and go to university and just take this chance and throw it in a, ba uh, in a bin no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so it's like you haven't looked in concrete options yet but it's just like okay you don't want to give up we are very, no, very much even if you. we wouldn't uh, yeah. make it public i mean right now <laughs> we really yeah, makes sense <laughs> I mean, we, we really try to come forward and right now we just do everything so we can still skate yeah. for Germany. We are German. We Our families live in Berlin and um, yeah, we, we would love to keep skating for our home country. But if it's just not possible, we we still want to keep skating. It's, yeah. it's, we don't want to take uh, be, like have our dream taken away from us. So no, and we but but that's really the the last option, and we hope that it's not coming to this. And we also hope if we make this more public, that then also like the yeah. politics and all came like make a little bit more pressure because we are both from from Berlin. We are yeah. like proud to be German and to represent our country. We are in the army. Our club is from Berlin, so. Yeah, we are really in it. We don't have a second, I don't know, we are half these or yeah. half there. So yeah. it would be just just to continue skating. And we hope that if it's so serious, somebody from outside would like it's go definitely. in and say, okay, it can't. That's, that's not a solution where the Federation is getting uh, millions of euros from or million of euro from, from the government that a pair <laughs> like this has to quit. Yeah. That's 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 true. That's true. Like we would, and yeah, let's try to make it as public as possible. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, so you just said, yeah, you're so motivated. You're at the point in your career where, yeah, quitting is just no option. So what do you still want to reach? What are your dreams? What do you want to reach in skating in your skating careers? A lot. So we really, really enjoyed that. A lot of people loved our short program, and we got such a positive feedback. And that's one goal, which seems small, but I think it's pretty big that I want to, and Robert as well, we want to um, keep entertaining the audience and keep like maybe being a little, of course, every pair is different in their own way, but we try to really um, keep the, the entertaining part, keep the, the fun part and not just, um, as Robert loves to say, die in beauty. Because it's like really, I said it a lot of times, but I think it's not uh, stressed enough that a pair skating program, which is fast and upbeat and fun, is so much harder than a slow program. Of course, you can do it in a perfect way. There, there are pairs that do it brilliant, but it's still easier. And um, like, yeah, we, we just love to to hear the the clapping in the audience and see when people have smiles on their face. And that's a big goal of mine to, to be kept in mind for something fun and something unique and something that the audience loved. Yeah. And also because maybe in, in Japan, everybody is such a big figure skating fan that they can have a look on if it was a double or triple twist, but especially in Germany, we want to make the sports like way more public. And then you can't impress them with a 
difference between a level three and a level four lift because <laughs> nobody will know but you can impress them with a nice program where they see like okay that's that's fun have a look on it and yeah we hope that maybe with this uh, a lot of people will uh, will will get more introduced in the sports and yes. will will watch it yeah and of course also sorry <laughs> also we got uh, the taste of uh, medals this season a little and um, of success and that's something we don't want to miss anymore like we really try everything to keep that going and even improve on that yeah. I was just thinking that at German nationals there the whole uh, ice sport centrum in Oberstdorf was actually packed full of people yeah it's kind of surprising I mean, you can really see that the interest is there like mm -hmm. people are uh, like fascinated by the sport maybe they just have to be get a little more introduced to it so of can, course yeah. of course it was Oberstdorf was a great chance for <laughs> for German figure skating to be open to the public we were lucky enough on that day that the weather was not good but it was just the best for figure skating so much people came I think It was one it of was the competitions so... where we had the most feedback on social media of people writing us and posting stories that we had in any competition. And yeah. it was really, really nice. And they could easily, because there was a show, but it wasn't well planned because it wasn't even light. It wasn't even dark. It was like a rehearsal. They could plan these a little bit more professional, do maybe a show the next day. And there they could get a lot of money and give the sportsmen something back. But they paid a lot of tickets, but nothing came back to the to the actual sport yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah also for outsiders outside of germany how would you you actually describe the situation of the port of sk figure skating in in germany Maybe. well honestly a little sad and hard but um yeah it's just difficult even like for us it's difficult when you imagine that we are the Like we know we have a lot to do and I don't want to like brag about ourselves, but right now we are one of the best, if not the best German figure skaters and we have a really difficult time. And you think if you made it to uh, a certain level, you don't have to worry that much anymore. So I don't even want to think about how younger skaters feel right now coming up. So it's not a not a nice situation right now in our sport. And it's very, very sad because it's a beautiful sport that I would wish more people could do in Germany and could fall in love with. But it's like this, it's just not possible, even though we had a lot of success this season. And also, I mean, when did we have such a great result in women's skating and world championships? So it's 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 a great motivation for small skaters but if they just can't pay it yeah, yeah, they just don't get everybody... any recognition in german yeah. media yeah. right so no yeah, yeah. No, 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 nobody like before europeans there was a little bit but even after europeans there was almost nothing and because of the goal was a medal and we said like yeah yeah maybe we will see and then the medal was there and then there was no more like following up on this and yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's very sad because you could make so much out of it. It's such a nice sport. It's like you have different types of, of elements. You have lifts, rows, twists, and you have the other categories. Uh, you could use it for so much. Yeah. Uh, we have many ice rings in Berlin where you could do shows or I don't know, anything. But nobody's doing anything. We have uh, thousands of concepts and of ideas and of documents we have to do. But... <laughs> In the future, there will be nobody to to fill in the documents anymore because the the real sport where it should be about is just dying. Yeah, and also as you already mentioned, it's it's very unpublic in media. Of course, they try to make a good coverage for Europeans, which is always good if it it shows up on TV because especially for the elder generation, it's so much easier to just switch on the TV. They know what programs it is on they can't find a live stream it's just too hard for them and the best uh like the best thing you can say is like we really tried to find our long program from worlds because people are interested families of us couldn't watch it live they are interested in seeing it but you can't find it it's just it's nowhere there. it's just yeah. nowhere and it also wasn't uh you, you it wasn't in tv when it was live even in the night yeah so even at three or four o'clock in the night it wasn't there the next day it also like they didn't do, do a recap or anything it just didn't exist and then how should people know 
yeah like there are so many young people also they don't even probably know that figure skating actually exists so it's, yeah. it's, it's really really sad and i mean i know from my my own experience as a teacher that when i show my students just in the break or something like i i show them the scam say gatings programs they are amazed by it they love it it's like something that children are really drawn to but like hardly anyone knows it so yeah. and then these together with the hard entry of you have to pay thousands by yourself how should how should anybody needs to do this like you have to climb a hill before you even can start uh, skating <laughs> in, the, in the beginning and then nobody will do it like you have to make it way easier to go into this sport yeah. if you want a future of this sport if you just want a club of four or five millionaires who skates a little bit and yeah yeah then you can uh, then you can continue like you're doing it at the moment yeah oh yeah really 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 tough situation um yeah we you try your best to bring it bring it forward <sighs> let's anyways maybe talk a little bit about the future about <laughs> what's next for you yes um, yeah uh, because yeah you're very motivated and i'm quite sure you will bring out great performances and break great programs so for your next season, in case it happens to you <laughs> somehow how you wish Hopefully. for, um, you will keep your free skate. You said yes. already, right? Yeah. Yes. So um, what makes this program special for you or why you decided you want to go on with it? So first of all, this program was choreographed in a very difficult time for us because we had a tough season. Um, in the Olympic season, we we were very, I wouldn't say demotivated because we kind of were still motivated, but we were just very helpless, helpless, sad. We didn't know because where to go. We know what sorry, we know what to change, but we didn't know how. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Robert already found that music like a few years ago, but it was just too early to skate it. But we both really were drawn to it and loved it and knew that we wanted to express the music in some kind of way. And it was really a nice progress and a good boost of uh, good mood for us when we went to Milan to do the program with Anna and Luca. And we really put like all our emotions, our negative as well as positive into that program. And we really got a, like, it really changed 100 like it was a complete change the next season yeah. so we really felt that that program helped us a lot in a way and but we still know that it has so much more potential and we want to do more performances like we did at, at yeah. world so um yeah we really really love to keep that program and then about the short program, you will have a new short program and you said already you really like to do upbeat music. So can we expect mm -hmm. something like this again or what in general can you tell already about the new short? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. We just can say yes. yes. No, we did the short program again, of course, with Luca, a lot with Luca. But then um, it was also very nice that Anna could come one day where we did the choreo with her the two children were there. It was a really nice day. Uh, everybody tried to make it possible that she can also join a bit of the program. And we're, we can only say we're super happy with that. It will be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I hope everybody will enjoy it because yeah. we really like it. <laughs> Perfect. Do you know already when you will show it for the first time or when will the big moment of reveal? Be there. I mean, latest we will for sure show it at the test gate, and probably from then on it will be public. I don't. We didn't really decide when we want to say what we're skating, but there will for sure be a point where <laughs> where you can see something. I see. So yeah, there will be German test skates, and then probably yeah the challengers. Um, yeah. Well, actually, will you? Do you know already uh, what you want to do? Maybe Bergamo is a good option, actually. <laughs> yes. We have to do. Uh, yeah, yes. We have to do the cheapest ones and not the one who makes the most sense for us. <laughs> so we do Bergamo for sure. It's very early, but it's yeah. just like the the super cheapest option. We have to travel nowhere. Yeah. We have we no coaches' expenses over there. It's very nice. Other stuff we have to see. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next one will uh, will increase. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what elements are you working on or what do you specifically want to improve on during the off season now? So right now we just want to start practicing again. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So we really, really want to go again. And um, we have to start a little slow because we had four weeks of almost no practice, just breaking in new skates on the weekend, but not really having the time to practice on ice. Um, so I do a lot of rehabilitation um, work on my back. So after the day from seven to sometimes uh, 5.30, I go in the gym. Annika as well, but I have to, to fix my back. What uh, after the one week uh, month of illness in, in November last year didn't, didn't came back. And yeah, so we do a lot of prevention. And we will start in two weeks with going a little deeper the figure skating elements again. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, there's always a lot to improve. We need to find new lifts, mm -hmm. which is always exciting. And everything else is always up for improvement. We want to improve our skating. We want to improve our speed. Um, want to improve our twist. Every, <laughs> always, always improve our twist. Um, and everything else too like we i love throws and i know that our throws are really good but always uh still want to make it better <laughs> you can make it more complicated entry you can make more speed you can work on a nice landing with a one foot transition after we also have to work way more on our solo jump because that was the most uh like uh, most or the the biggest rate of uh, mistakes last yeah. year so yeah, there are a lot of things come together and we're happy that we have like a kind of base which we didn't had the year before because yeah, we didn't come from zero, like we came from, from the minus. Yeah. So you have now two more weeks of the military camp and then back to Bergamo? Two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half, yeah. Two and a half. And end of May we will go back to Bergamo. Bergamo. And then yeah, start again. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So as a last question, maybe a bit away from skating, is there something, what are you looking forward to, to do this summer? Any holiday plans, any free time activities? <laughs> Nothing? No, our holiday holiday was spent at the army. Oh, <laughs> no, I see. Yeah. We had uh, a lot to do before the army in Berlin because we are almost never here. So it's always uh, difficult to put all the appointments that are just in one year we put, we put it in one week or one and a half weeks and also we had a really nice time seeing again all of our family members but it was still also tough to put everything that we missed over the year in that week yeah. and yeah we will for sure have a long weekend somewhere but we didn't really plan about it that yet we're just really happy to be back in Bergamo and also very happy to be back training and that's I think that's the thing we look forward to the most <laughs> yeah, and we have a lot of family and friends who will come to visit us so they will spend their holidays there and maybe we got a little bit of the holiday wife yeah. <laughs> you can show them around. also relax yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah can you speak a bit of italian already or are you working on it a little bit <laughs> like a really little bit but we try to go a little bit deeper in the language because we had our exams last year mm -hmm. and so we we plan in the uh, in the vacations of the university to start uh, with the language and i mean there's no better place to learn the language than in the country so yeah exactly. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> perfect thank you so much good luck with everything really thank, and, you. Uh, thank you yeah we're really looking forward i think everyone's looking forward to see you next season and um, thank you. yeah all the best <laughs> bye thank bye. you so much thank bye. you bye-bye <laughs>